Hey friends, February is the month of love. As we know, Valentine's Day is around the corner from when I'm posting this video. And this is the month when we tend to think about romantic things, including romantic perfumes. So I have 10 fragrances that I wanna share with you that could be worn on or around Valentine's Day or that you might wanna keep in mind for date night all year round. And the way that we'll go through today's fragrances is to start with ones that are softer in projection, in sillage, in tone and texture, and could be worn in early morning hours and or in work environments. Then we'll transition into some fragrances that are maybe appropriate for date night and particularly those that can hold their own in a little bit colder weather. I realize not all viewers are in cold weather regions, but wanted to throw some in there for that. And then we will end with some fragrances that are maybe more appropriate for later in the evening when you want to be a little bit more intimate. Maybe you've had a nightcap and you're settling in for the evening, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I'd love to hear before we get started, do you celebrate Valentine's Day? And if so, how do you do it? If you have a significant other, what is your ritual? Do you go out to dinner together? Does someone buy flowers? Do you do the whole chocolates thing? Do you exchange presents? Or do you just cook each other a special dinner? For my husband and I, it really just depends from year to year. But typically, we try to make the dinner for Valentine's night or close to it at least a little bit more special than usual. And then we do usually do some sort of gesture of love, including maybe exchanging a small gift or doing like an extra special dessert for each other or something like that. So we keep it low key, but I'm curious to hear your ritual. And if you are not booed up with a significant other, if you are flying solo, do you treat yourself? Do you buy yourself a bouquet of flowers that you can enjoy or pour yourself some champagne and pull out the strawberries and have your own Valentine's night where you just say, I'm good tonight. I did choose my lipstick based on the occasion of <laughs> this video. It is newer to me. I am very, very much in love with Gucci fragrances. It's one of the splurges in the makeup arena that I really enjoy and think is worth the extra dollars. Not all lipsticks are. And this particular one is called Love Before Breakfast. Hello? How appropriate for a Valentine video. There's also going to be a lipstick in this package here that was sent to me by House of Siage that I want to unbox with you. I don't usually do unboxings on screens because unboxings are like, who wants to watch somebody open a box? But that box, that box is really gorgeous. And so I haven't touched it. I know what's in there and I want to open it with all of you. And it is one of the fragrances that I'm going to feature today. I do know what the fragrance smells like and it's a good one. So Valentine's Day is on a Wednesday this year in 2024. I'm going to assume that most of you are going to work or you're working from home, but this is something that you would wear maybe earlier in the day or during the daylight hours as opposed to something you might pull out at night. Again, this is all arbitrary, friends. Wear your fragrances whenever you want, however you want, but for the sake of a little storytelling, just play along with me, okay? And this is one that I haven't featured on my channel in a while, and it's hanging tough in a collection that has gone through a number of declutters, and I just can't seem to let this one go. One, because it's a beautiful, easy-wearing scent, and because the bottle is just so gorgeous. So imagine that you are in your comfy robe in the morning. Maybe it's a silk robe or maybe it's a fuzzy robe that makes you feel cozy and comfortable and you want a pretty girl fragrance to put on that isn't gonna be overpowering and that maybe will fade away in a few hours and you can transition into another scent. This is from Lalique and this is Rêve de Infini. Rêve de Infini. Boy, did I have a hard time saying this name when I first purchased this bottle. <laughs> I think I'm good with the pronunciation. And I understand that this means an infinite dream or an ongoing, like never ending dream, which I think is so lovely. This is a nudie pink on camera. It's showing up a little bit more like white frosty, but in person, it's a little bit more on the pinky, maybe even a little peachy tone to it. And we know that Lalique is known for their gorgeous bottle flacons. There's a, a bunch of these online. I would encourage you to go check out Lalique as a brand. I think it's underrated in the sense that it had a moment. It had a heyday on YouTube probably a couple of years ago. And then folks have kind of turned their attention away from Lalique as other brands have really uh, come to the forefront. This brand though still has a lot of solid offerings, including this little beauty here. I would characterize this fragrance as having a musky base and it's a light very easy wearing musk, not an overbearing, heavy, like super. If you think about musk like clouds, there are some musks that are like thunderclouds. 
<laughs> they're thick, they're heavy, they're dense, and they're like ominous and overwhelming. And you, you know, you feel like Armageddon's coming. There are some musks like that. And then there are some that are just like the wispiest, highest clouds in the sky that are almost like gauzy and see-through. I think this is the latter type of musk, very light and wispy and almost like cottony in a way. And what I enjoy about the fragrance is it has this powdery fruitiness to it. The primary players are lychee and peach and I think a rose and so it's sweet and it's soft and it's delicate as a fragrance this is uh, one that you know any fragrance can be worn throughout the decades of your life but if you wanted to associate this type of scent with a specific decade I might think about like late teens into your early 20s maybe even early 30s as the kind of age of the fragrance the age appropriateness of the fragrance of course, y'all, I'm about to turn 50 next year. I would absolutely rock this and still do. It's in my collection going strong, but it gives you that sort of youthful, light, wispy feeling. This has been described as being like fizzy or almost champagne-y on the opening. And I think that that's right. It does have this little sort of sparkly nature when you first spray it on and it's just delightful. And I would say at this point is a hidden gem. It had a moment a while back, but folks don't talk about this. So it's kind of gone back into the hidden category. And I'll try to tell you where you can find fragrances. This is retail pricey. It's about, I think it's in the 190s on retail. And so you can look for it like on So Avant Garde and sites like that that feature Lalique. I'm a partner with So Avant Garde. My link is down below and you can use Veronica 20 for 20% 20 off of any fragrance on that site. But for this fragrance, I listen, I'm going to tell you to go to FragranceNet for it because you're going to see it a lot less expensive there. Let me check out what this is going for for you. Right, so on FragranceNet, a full 3.3 ounce bottle, which is this bigger one, this is the full size, is out there for $39. I mean, you can't beat that in terms of being an affordable beauty for Valentine's Day. And it is so lovely to look at on your shelf, on your counter, wherever you put your fragrances on your fragrance tray. Give this one a shot. Red Infini, one of the most light, feminine, pretty girl fragrances I have in all of my collection. My next recommendation, we're still in daytime friends and you're wanting maybe something with a little bit more punch than the fragrance that I just described. And you kind of like a gourmand touch as well. Have you put your nose on Scarlet Poppy from Jo Malone? And this is the Cologne Intense line. There are some that come in these colored bottles and in the black bottles that are a little bit maybe thicker and longer lasting than the ones that are in the clearer bottles, which tend to be more like a true cologne type of splash. They behave like a body splash uh, in a there's some beautiful ones in that lineup too, but these tend to be a little bit longer lasting. I will say that this fragrance before I describe it is it feels soft. It has some good longevity and it has a nice little scent bubble, but to your nose, it will feel soft and demure and delicate. However, it has a tiny bit more punch than that Lalique fragrance that I shared with you. This one is for those of you that like a creamy, powdery almond situation. This is uh, mostly tonka bean as a fragrance. There's heliotrope. Heliotrope tends to come across like a powdery almond note. Oh my gosh, this is good. It has a little bit of the like Play-Doh, maybe slight, slight like hint of doll head scent, but more so a very soft, creamy Play-Doh fragrance here. So think about like a bed of musk. And then there's like a hazy powder hanging over that. That powder has a tonka bean, a sweet tonka bean. And tonka bean can sometimes be, it smells vanillic, like vanilla. It can sometimes smell like almond. And it can sometimes smell a little bit like cherry, depending on what it's playing against in a fragrance. I don't get cherry here. I get mostly that creamy almond vanilla. Not so far in the gourmand direction that it counts as a gourmand. I think it has like a gourmand thread to it where it feels almost almost sweet and edible. For those of you that like a fresh Play-Doh smell and the idea of that except expressed as a perfume <laughs> is of interest to you with almond, here you go. And I'm not intending to say that this smells just like Play-Doh, but there are some reminders of that here. And I think it's done in a really beautiful, lovely way. I find this to be like an intimate skin scent situation. Yes, some people get farther projection. And I've heard most people say that this lasts fairly long on them. When I first got this, I felt like it didn't last long on me. And as I've worn it since, and it has sat on my shelf and matured more, it has performed better and better. And hello, the bottle's red to go with love. 
Valentine's Day. Now, in terms of where to find this fragrance, I would suggest doing a search because prices can be all over the place. It's sold at Sephora. I think it's in the $220 range on Sephora. And I think you can probably get it for, let me see here. Looks like it's sitting out on Fragrance Net for about $125. It's on Nordstrom. It's on a bunch of different sites. So just, I would say, look it up and go to the shopping tab if you're interested in getting the best price. Otherwise, just go straight to Sephora, add this beauty to cart and check out there. So then friends, maybe it's late afternoon, you're going out for late lunch, perhaps you're having a cocktail right after work, and you want a feminine fragrance that exudes happiness, playfulness, and femininity. You want to show up in your best feminine self, uh, but not too mature, right? We're not into like the evening hours yet, into that sort of dark, sultry type of scent. And you want something that you know is going to be crowd pleasing and enjoyed by whoever your company is. Y'all, I present to you one that has gotten better and better as it has sat on my shelf. I enjoyed this very much when I sampled it. When I first got this, I was like, oh, maybe it's a little bit softer than I thought. And it's gotten better. So this is the Chronic Rouge Extreme. Again, here we have another red bottle appropriate for the season of love. <laughs> and this fragrance is classic, sweet, fruity fragrance. There's a vanilla base to it. Prominent notes are raspberry and whipped cream and melon and pear. So think about a nice balance of sweet, bright fruits that are fresh, like fresh, sweet fruits, along with the sultriness of raspberry and a beautiful creaminess to it. I think this is a fun fragrance. I will say about this that these uh, fragrances in general, the Byron fragrances, are accused of being a bit more on the sort of generic designer side for what they are. You know, this being a niche fragrance that is in, I think this is 220, this bottle, brand new, retail. So again, do your Google search and see if you're looking for a lower price where you can find it or where there might be a discount code or something like that. I think it's worth it because of what it is. It's such a well done, fruity, creamy fragrance that, you know, it's hard to not enjoy this. And I think, you know, for ladies, I think whoever is enjoying this fragrance on you will really find it appealing and lovely and want to come in closer for a little bit of a sniff. This is not the fragrance that has like that va va voom factor. It's not, well, I guess some people might say that, but for me, this is more the one that like, I'm thinking if a friend of mine had this on a female friend, I'd be like, oh my gosh, you smell so pretty. What is that? It would feel fresh and pretty and bright and fun. So the chronic rouge extreme, big thumbs up for Valentine's day or any other romantic occasion. Okay, for my career ladies who want to smell classy and sophisticated at work because you think that the fruity fragrances are maybe a little too youthful for the kind of persona that you want to project in an office setting, you want to be taken a little bit more seriously and you want something more sophisticated, it is really hard to go wrong with the next fragrance. And let me tell you, this has survived several declutters as well, and it's hanging tough. And that is Narciso Rouge. I mean, hello, this beautiful red cube, of course, screams Valentine's Day. And I love that this is one of the powdery fragrances that has been hanging tough for me. I went through a phase where I really loved powdery fragrances and then went through a phase where maybe I just wasn't reaching for them as much, but this one has remained. This has a lovely iris note. I think that is what gives it the class and sophistication. Of course, it has some of the classic Narciso musk, not quite as strong as what is in the white cube, for example, the regular Narciso. This is a softer, more subdued musk with some light, very light, thin powderiness and iris. And so some folks have described this as smelling a little bit makeup-y, like a lipstick, a new lipstick might smell. I would say the one thing that keeps this from smelling too much, like in the makeup-y direction for me, is that it has a nice, soft, sweet vanilla that accompanies the musk, a little hint of woodiness in the base, and then that powder and iris sort of hover above that in the composition. So I don't think of this as a particularly alluring scent, but I do think it has a romantic touch to it because of the classy femininity that I would associate this with. Like I could see someone like a Jackie O type of personality wearing this fragrance or someone like a Nicole Kidman dressed head to toe. I could see her pulling off a fragrance like this and looking stately and smelling sophisticated. And in that sense, having sort of an air of romance to her. So Narciso Rouge. So then maybe we're going into the early evening hours. I wouldn't hesitate to wear this all day, every day, all year round. It's a really, really beautiful fragrance. But thinking about going to a candlelit dinner, maybe you're having those late, late afternoon, very early evening cocktails followed by dinner or something like that. And you want to show up smelling very romantic and pretty and beautiful. 
you know, your hair is done up, your makeup's perfect, and you're feeling like you want to get spoiled. <laughs> I've had this fragrance for a while and it's one of the most beautiful florals in my collection and very, very underrated for what it is. This is from Toka and the fragrance is called Florence. I love these bottles. The shapes of them are so pretty sitting on your vanity or shelves or whatever. And the sort of Baroque relief that's on the caps, I think is really romantic too. This entire line is very, very pretty. If you have one of the big flagship Sephora stores that has a lot of fragrances out, they typically have the Toka line out to sniff. So take advantage of that and see if you can get your nose on some of these. The fragrance is the trifecta of gardenia and tuberose and jasmine. However, to keep from getting too serious in the white floral direction, this has a very, very thin sort of ribbon of sweet fruits behind it, like pear and maybe peach and something like that. Whatever is in here, it's a very sort of dull sweetness in the background that kind of caresses the trio of white florals here to present this really romantic, lovely, highly feminine scent. It has an ever so slight bit of musk and a real soft hint of woodiness here in the fragrance to ground the entire composition. But those three white florals are front and center, the key players, and they play off of each other so nicely in this fragrance. It's like this undeniable, crowd-pleasing white floral fragrance, like I said, with a little bit of fruitiness to keep it from being too serious, and then that musk and woodiness to ground it. Highly, highly recommend getting your nose on this if you really enjoy white florals. This is, this is a, a winner. And if you like white florals, but you want something maybe a little bit edgier than that Florence fragrance, which tends to stay on the soft feminine side, boy, Tuberosa from Nishane will do it for you. This is a proud Tuberose fragrance. What I will say as one of the key differences between this and maybe those other sort of traditional girly white floral fragrances with touches of fruitiness is this has both gardenia and tuberose, and it has an alang alang note, which lends some creaminess. It has amber in the base. It has sandalwood, which adds a little bit of intrigue and sexiness to it. And then it has a slight touch, a slight touch of greenness in the background. I would say this is more complex and maybe slightly more mysterious than the Florence fragrance, which is a predictable, beautiful, romantic fragrance. This is romantic leaning into sexy territory and very long lasting, nicely projecting, and probably one of the hidden gems from this house. You know, we hear about 100 Silent Ways, we hear about Wulong Cha, we hear about Ban Your Flames, and a bunch of others, Nefs. And people don't really talk about Tuberosa, which is one of the powerhouse fragrances. This is to Tuberose what Jasmine Rouge from Tom Ford is to spicy like jasmine fragrances. This is the tuberose equivalent of that where it has some depth, darkness, and sexiness to it, which is great for like a very sexy candlelit dinner out or in. Either can work, dinner out or dinner in. So the next fragrance kind of goes in this lineup and this is one of the later evening fragrances, I would say, that are more sexy and really appropriate for you know, grown folks time, if you will, <laughs> during Valentine's. And I wanted to unbox this gorgeousness with you from House of Siage. Look at this beautiful packaging. You know, I have you ever seen me unbox on my channel? No, because who wants to watch someone open a box? But how beautiful is this box? I mean, I'm truly, truly impressed with the presentation of this. So let's open this together. I have not touched this. I know what the fragrance smells like in here. And when it came, my husband and I both pulled this out of the box and thought, wow, that is a really, really beautiful box. This particular package is on sale for half off now on House of Siage. And I want to show you what's in it. So it says how we, y'all, anyway. Okay. Great presentation. I'm kind of excited to see how everything looks in here. How precious is all of this? Let's take these out and see what's going on in this gorgeous package. So this is a fantastic present for yourself if you want to splurge a little bit or ask your significant other to put it in their cart and check out while this is half off on the website. It comes with this body wash and this, so the fragrance is Passion de l'Amour, which is one of the ones that I enjoyed from my sampling experience. So a full, almost seven ounce body wash of Passion de l'Amour. Do you like that scent? If so, leave it in the comments. Tell us your thoughts. And for those of you that love to layer, great to start off with this, then do your lotion, of course, and then add your fragrance on top of that. 
So here's the next box in the package. I love the little tropical motif with the flower and the little lizard here or gecko. Now I'm not one to like reuse boxes, but this is one that I would probably reuse for samples or something like that. How pretty is that? This is my first lipstick from House of Sillage. Let me tell you something. If you don't know about me, I love makeup, as you can probably tell from all the makeup I'm wearing today. And I talk about makeup on my other channel, Essential Veronica. I have like over 100 lipsticks. I'm obsessed with lipstick. <laughs> So really excited to add this to my collection. Here is the little package that it comes in. There's a little mirror on the inside. I mean, this is, y'all, this is some delightfully bougie stuff here. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> a little carrying case. And look, look how beautiful this is. This is darling. Here is how the fragrance comes in this package. Look at this. Watch this. Er, muggered. <laughs> How absolutely gorgeous is that? I mean, look at look at how glorious these are. I don't know about you. I'm entering this era of my life as I approach 50 where I am going to treat myself with the things that I want and can afford. The afford part is an important factor here, friends. We're not trying to spend all willy-nilly and go crazy. But if there's something that I enjoy looking at, that I enjoy wearing, that I enjoy putting on my face, that I enjoy smelling like, that I enjoy experiencing it, and my budget can afford it, I am at that point where I'm treating myself. So these are the kinds of things that make me super happy. I can see them just bringing me delight. <laughs> delight every time I open my purse to reapply my fragrance or to reapply my lipstick. These are the small things that in my mind, I feel like make a big difference in your day-to-day -day experience. So both of these are gold plated, like actual gold plated. And they both, each one has over 300 little Swarovski crystals encrusted onto the cases here. The gecko, look at the cute little gecko. I mean, I mean, the cute little gecko has the most gorgeous little gems on its body. The House of Sillage is stamped in. I mean, so friends, I'm going to tell you the price of this and you're going to be like, seriously? And I'm going to tell you, yes, seriously, because of the whole thing that you get, the box, the little carry case for your lipstick, the little bags. This alone is so precious, so precious. The lipstick, the fragrance that we're going to talk about in a minute and the body wash. How delightful, how delightful. This will make great, oh my God, look at the little flowers. Look at the pink flowers. These are raised up, okay? They're not like painted on. They're literally applied to the thing. Okay, I can talk about these two items <laughs> all day. Let's look at the lipstick. So this is the color Prince. So it comes like that, the refill, right? And you pull it out like that, like a bullet. It clicks in and then you have, I mean, the case. I mean, how, how gorgeous. So nice, pretty pink. If I had unboxed this before, I probably would have worn this. Very, very pretty, almost like purpley pink there. Really pretty romantic color. Love that. Look, I can stare at this alone. I've seen people unbox these in their videos and I've always thought those are nice. They look pricey and I, you know, go online and go, mm, they're pricey. But having this in hand, it's super heavy, super luxe. Okay. Here's, here's how I would descri describe this. You can go to Vegas and you can stay on the strip and you can go to one of the budget hotels if you want to, or you can stay at the Bellagio and places like that. This is like the Bellagio version. Do with that what you will. I'm ready for Bellagio. I've stayed at the Bellagio. I like the Bellagio. <laughs> so then let's talk about the fragrance. And I mean, oh, so pretty. So the scent comes here. And it is also like a refillable travel spray type of situation. So I have smelled this before in the discovery set. I'm going to make this my scent of the day today. Look at this. Look at this. Every time I look at this, I see something new and different in it. That's like blowing my mind around the rim of this is stamped in passion de l'amour. Absolutely fantastic. Around the green little gemstone are other Swarovski crystals in a little ring there. There's so many cool little features on this thing. This is so pretty. Now I want them all. This is trouble. <laughs> this is trouble. By the way, you see me dabbing. You know why? Because it does not damage your fragrance. That is a myth, friends. You can dab away. You can dab away. You're not going to damage molecules. If you know anything about chemistry, you're fine. Your fragrances are fine. You can dab away. 
Yeah, this is just as pretty as I remember the it. fragrance to me is a combination of a nice, light, airy saffron, a very soft, silky oud. It's got raspberry. It's got a little caramel. So it's feminine and has some like, like a masculine backing to it with a feminine forefront. And sometimes those are the sexiest fragrances to wear. So this is so super pretty. So thank you to House of Siash for sending this over to me. I'm going to really enjoy this. So friends, if you are interested in this, I'm going to have a link both in the description box and in the pinned comment. The retail price on this package is over $800. It's now half off of that, half off. And I know even that may seem a little bit wild to some of you. But when I tell you that having these in hand, feeling how heavy and how luxe and how beautiful they are, I totally get it. <laughs> so, I'm sold and I'm probably going to be picking up more of these types of cases here this evening and perhaps a few more of these travel sprays because they're so, so absolutely gorgeous, like spoil yourself, all of those things, all of those things. And to know that I can carry it like this with the little mirror on the inside, stop it, stop it. Okay, so yeah, Passion de l'Amour as a romantic fragrance. First of all, the name, right? And an evening scent that will bring some sexy flair to your evening date night out on Valentine's Day is fantastic. And then you can put your little travel spray in your purse and you can put your little lipstick in your purse too and be all set for the night. Beautiful. So big thank you to House of Siage for sending me this fantastic package. And yes, I will be reusing this box and the red box also. That will happen. Perhaps this next fragrance should have actually been before Passion de l'Amour, which is a little bit meatier and heavier for evening time. However, I still think that this one can hold its own throughout the entire evening. And so if you heard me tell the story of this, forgive me for repeating it, but I fell in love with this fragrance in New York City as a woman stepped onto an elevator that I was riding and she smelled intoxicating. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to get the name of this fragrance from this woman. So there's a whole story about how she didn't know what the fragrance was called. And I was trying to like rush to get the name out of her as the elevator was going down. Cause I'm actually like very introverted and very shy <laughs> and have a hard time approaching people in public. But I got up the nerve and I asked her. And when I tell you I ran to buy this fragrance, I ran, I didn't get my shoes or nothing, Jesus. If you know what that reference is from, drop me a note in the comments. I went and added this to cart and brought it into my collection. And then it had the nerve to get discontinued, but it's still available. It's actually available on Joma Shop and FragranceNet. I have a link to Joma Shop in the description box if you're interested in looking on there. Yeah, we definitely put a La Via Belle in this mix. <laughs> and this is the Wee Flanker. We. Ooh, we. <laughs> Ooh, we. Ooh. Imagine the original La Via Belle very much dialed down, toned down with a more pronounced iris, a very, very soft, feminine, easy wearing patchouli and fruity notes added in. This is complex. It's very sexy. It's one of those that can transition very nicely from like happy hour, playful, pretty, kind of sexy and flirty. Uh, into evening hours when you really want to bring out your feminine wiles the most. It can really transition nicely between those. This is such a pretty fragrance. This is the Baba Boom fragrance. <laughs> this is the one that will have men turning their heads to sniff what you're wearing. The bottle is pretty. So check this out. It's now, since it's discontinued, you can find it relatively inexpensive. This full bottle, I think you can get I want to say in the $70 to $80 range on Joma Shop. So check that out or you can look on FragranceNet and see if they have a better deal. So pretty. It's like if you found La Via Belle annoying and cloying, which I don't, I think it's a very beautiful fragrance, but I know how people get. Once these popular fragrances get too popular, people want to talk bad about them. They want to talk trash about our pretty fragrances. This is a more irisy version, a bit deeper than La Via Belle, uh, and it has none of what people find to be cloying in that fragrance. In this one, this is highly sexy, super duper, super duper sexy. Ooh. Long lasting too, by the way. You see, I haven't sprayed a whole lot. I've worn it a number of times since I've purchased it, but you don't need a lot of this to go a long way. These bottles are gorgeous too. Let's go on. So can we talk about the next one? Can we do a little Tevin Campbell? Can we talk for a moment? Girl, I want to know your name. I've been wearing this fragrance for a long time, a long, long time. Gosh, let me think about this. I've been wearing this since the early 2000s. That's over 20 years. 
wow. And I think it has gone through a reformulation, although I really don't care because it's close enough if it has gone through a reformulation that it doesn't matter to me. And this is very sexy from Victoria's Secret. I mean, no one does sexy like Victoria's Secret does. You know what I'm saying? We can get into all of the very expensive niche fragrances that we want. Victoria's Secret kind of holds the crown when it comes to sexy fragrances that are mass appealing on ladies for the opposite sex. No denying that. Now, I've been wearing Very Sexy so long that I've gone through an original bottle of it, and I still have one of the old school sprays, y'all. And it still smells fantastic. This is a very difficult fragrance to describe. When you look at the notes on Fragrantica, I'm like, really? Because I'm not sure that I get all of that. It's talking about this fragrance being musky and fruity and floral. For me, this is a floral mature bomb of a fragrance with amber behind it. So there's a coffee note and a cactus note and pepper and clementine and all sorts of stuff happening in here. But it is... Leave those notes alone, y'all. This is a very mature, sexy, floral, almost smothering fragrance and very much a crowd pleaser for the gentleman. And evening scents. You can wear this during the day if you like. Of course, I wear things during the day because I work from home and it really doesn't matter. But in terms of wearing this out in public, for me, I think of evening. I think of cool to cold evenings. Uh, would I wear this in the summer? Maybe lightly spritzed, okay? Lightly, <laughs> because it has tremendous presence. It's long lasting and a very super sexy, deep, alluring, intoxicating floral. I love this. I love this. <laughs> and they might still sell body creams and sprays and, and the whole bit, but make sure that you get yourself the Eau de Parfum concentration. I believe you can get this on Fragrance Net also. I don't know if Joma Shop carries this. I don't even know if Victoria's Secret still carries this. I guess I could look for you. Hold on, let me do that. They sure do. Victoria's Secret is still rocking this for the people. The 1.7 ounce, is this the one? Yes, this is the 1.7 ounce. It's $60, $59.99. The 3.4 ounce version is not being sold or sold out or something like that. Y'all, if you like the old school powerhouse floral, floral, floral amber florals, <laughs> heavily mature, heavily mature, cl almost cloying amber floral fragrances, boom, you really need to try very sexy. If you have very sexy and you agree, can you drop like three red hearts down in the comments so all of our friends can know this is, this is the business right here? Okay, then, you know, you've had your day. <laughs> you went out on the town. You've had your beautiful romantic dinner out. You've got to express all of your feminine wiles with your curvy dress and your high heels and you're smelling good, looking good. You got your red hot lipstick on, the whole thing. You're back home and you've had some nightcaps and you're ready for maybe some more intimate moments. This fragrance was sent to me for review by Commodity, the brand, as part of their Valentine campaign. And this is called Velvet, which reminds me of the song with the lyrics. Well, the song is called Black Velvet. Black Velvet with that slow Southern style, a new religion that'll bring you to your knees. Black Velvet, if you please. <laughs> I love that. That's a great song. Great karaoke song. Are you all karaoke singers? Because I am. And I can't get anybody to go do karaoke with me. Do you want to come? We can do karaoke one night. So, I think it was Denise Adore. Denise, if you're watching, hey girl, hey. I think she described this fragrance, I believe it was her, as smelling like a curtain, like a velvet curtain. And I was like, oh my God, yes, there's some of that with this fragrance. So this is the expressive version, which is the middle one. You know, with commodity, they have like a personal one that's really sort of intimate and close to the skin, an expressive version that is meant to be shared with others, like in your scent space. And then there's a bold version that's supposed to fill up a room. So this is the expressive version. And they sent me the card that has the notes on it. You know, sometimes for granted, I get stuff wrong. So just be careful about looking at notes on there. So the top notes are roasted almond and coconut water. And this does open almost like a slightly smoky almond with a sweetness, like a sweet creaminess from coconut. Coconut water is kind of a thin scent, a thin note, but there is a little bit of the creaminess that coconut lends. And then in the middle, it's rose petals and vanilla beans and then white birch and amber in the base. So it does dry down into a sort of ever so slightly smoky, woody, resinous fragrance, but you get this nice almond sweetness throughout it's a little bit dark. It's a little bit gothic. 
It's a little bit sensual. <laughs> it's an interesting fragrance that way. And the thing about commodity fragrances that I find is they really sort of bloom on skin. Like you can smell them from the blotter and they smell one way. You can smell them on, you know, the card or whatever, and they smell one way. But when you put them on your skin, it's like they mesh with you a certain way. So this one has this sort of mysterious kind of nighttime almond, sweet, creamy, but also like this like, <laughs> like gothic dustiness to it with the woodiness. It's kind of hard to describe. Yeah, I wonder how this would pair with like by the fireplace to maybe amp up either the vanilla or the smokiness here, or how this would pair with something like material from Amouage to amp up the amber and vanilla in it. This is an interesting one. So check this out for late, late evening. And then I got a bonus one for those of you that are still around. If you are, can you do a black heart in the comments? I love when y'all do that. It lets me know that you've watched all the way to the end and it's so fun. These are long videos, so I understand if people have to click out sooner, but I so, so appreciate those of you who have the time and the stamina, the stamina to hang out with me through the entire video. So <laughs> a few weeks ago, y'all, I'm showing y'all my bra straps. I'm so sorry. Have a little class, Veronica. Be classy. Keep it classy. Okay. A few weeks ago, I did a video on the new notes fragrance house. It looks like this, the thumbnail, check it out. <laughs> I had a lot of fun filming that and trying those fragrances. And I mentioned that there was one in particular that was highly surprising to me because when I first smelled it, I was like, Ooh, what is that? What did they do? What did they put inside of a bottle for us to sniff now? <laughs> I let it sit. I came back to it. I was intrigued. I kept sniffing and sniffing and then decided. I like this. I like this and I shouldn't like it because it smells like it should not be a likable fragrance. Do y'all remember which one? Erotica Minimale. So this is my bonus for those of you that are super bold, super daring, and you want a fragrance that is outside of the norm. <laughs> this fragrance I described as having almost a skanky flair to it. Y'all remember the story about Eyes Wide Shut, the movie, Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise? with the masquerade. What do you call that? The masquerade mask? The mask. The thing. You see the eyes, but you can see the mouth. You know what I mean? This smells very erotic, exotic, and intimate. <laughs> it smells like a combination of bodies after being intimate with some powder, with some floral notes. It's like, I think I described it as absolute aphrodisiac meets Paloma Picasso meets agent provocateur i believe is the three fragrances that i smashed together for this one yeah i'll just leave it at that this is for the late late night the late late night the super intimate part of valentine's day <laughs> erotica minimale for those of you if you dare i really hope that you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave down in the comments what your valentine's day tradition or rituals are and i hope you don't take anything i said in this video too seriously these videos are really for fun and for connection around fragrance do check out though in seriousness that absolutely gorgeous house of sillage package when i tell you that i was blown away by it when i opened it that is what i mean and i've seen a lot of packages i've seen a lot of unboxings but those little items in that package are just chef's kiss chef's kiss so anyway, happy Valentine's Day. Much love to you. Big hearts to you. Hope that you get spoiled or spoil yourself on Valentine's Day. Get yourself a bouquet of flowers. Eat some chocolate and your favorite dinner. See you in the next video. Take care.